Okay, we have our deck of playing cards now of every frame in our animation, all one complete 100% opaque frame. We can use our sketch to inform us of how we think we can tell the story in nine panels, whether they're squares or not. Squares help, but right in the middle, that's when I'm zoomed in and there's a lot of changing color going on, but it's before the head pops off. So I gotta find that moment. And out of 34 frames, you might think, okay, that's gonna be perfectly in the middle, so that's gonna be frame 17. And it's like that's zoomed in and he's changing color. Yeah, so maybe that's a good one. And it's before the camera starts to shake. Camera shakes a little bit. So yeah, let's use that. So I'm gonna mark that with a color. That's my center storyboard, at least for now. Um, I can go ahead and get rid of all of these so they don't get in the way because this is now my storyboard file. So how do I do that? I hold down shift, come on, I select them all and I just drag them to the little trash can within the window and then I can hide the timeline, which I recommend because the timeline can screw things up, to window, timeline, turn it off because now I'm done. Now I've got all my, my playing cards and I'm just making my final storyboard. So I'm gonna turn on frame 17. Doesn't matter if I have other frames on underneath it. And I'm going to change the canvas size. So if I'm going to deal out cards, I need a table top to deal them onto. So right now, my canvas size is eight by eight, right? I wanna change that to 30 inches. This is if you have a square, to 40 inches something we've used before, right? It's the, a full size sheet of printing paper. And I say, okay, notice it's gonna anchor it in the middle. So this is my big layout tip. How do you make something exactly centered in Photoshop without having to use the rulers and be really picky and use little arrow keys to move it? You just grow the shape around it, right? And it will perfectly be centered. This is still, um, it's only 150 pixels per inch, but because it's 150 pixels at 30 inches by 40 inches, that's print resolution, right? So that's 300 pixels per inch at something like eight by 10 or even 11 by 14. Okay, so now it looks like this, but I don't wanna deal cards at a picnic on a checkered background. I wanna deal it on a nice clean white tablecloth. So I'm gonna to go to the very bottom of my frames, make a new layer, say edit fill with white, All right? And this is important. Don't make your final storyboard on gray or on black because when you print it, then it's gonna to have to print that background color. If you fill it with white, it doesn't have to print anything. In fact, we don't even need to fill it with white. That's just to help us envision how it will print, All right? And this is to make a print version of your animation. Now, if your animation is widescreen, then you have to think, okay, eight is to 30 as what my dimensions are to what, <laughs> right? So if yours is like 12 inches wide and eight inches tall, then I might do, well, 12, eight is to 30, like 12 is to, let's try 50, you know, and you see, you give it enough space. And you can always grow your canvas size more if you need to. The important thing is you're growing it from the center. Now these are the layout tools. If you go to view, you can show, go to show the grid and the, it's command apostrophe is a shortcut for that, for turning on and off the grid. Because our rulers are on and our rulers are set to inches, these grids show us these squares are basically half inch squares with little quarter inch dotted squares inside. No, actually, I take that back. They are one inch squares, you see? 18 to 19, 19 to 20, with little quarter inch squares inside. We want to make a guide, and we basically want there to be one inch of space in this dimension between every panel. So in comic books, these are called the gutters, right? So, we're going to use the move tool. We're gonna to click 
on the, the ruler and bring down guides, and they should snap right to the one inch mark on all four sides of our animation frame. Like so. And if you actually click on your frame, you can bring guides down and they'll snap right next to the side of your frame. But they only snap to the layer that's detected. All right, so now I have a perfectly clean layout. I don't really need those those guides anymore. Now I see where each card should be dealt. Okay, now all the cards are, are stacked in the middle like a deck. So I'm gonna deal from underneath the deck. First thing I'm gonna do is move my tablecloth down underneath the first card and I'm gonna deal the first frame. So I have auto select layer turned off because then I can use the move tool. I've selected frame one and I can just deal from under the deck, put it there. Then I can guess, okay, let's jump to frame six, put that in. The only change there is the sun. So maybe that's not the most interesting. Let's try frame seven instead. Oh, I'm moving the wrong one. Ah, you see his head's going down. But what's a better one? Maybe frame eight. Ah, there he's drinking and the sun comes in. That's a better second one. That matches the intentions of my story a little bit better. Okay, next one, maybe uh, frame 13. Let's try that. Why not? Ah, he looks up. Swallowing. Is frame 14 better? With his mouth open? Yeah, I kind of like frame 14 better. Let's do that. So you see, I'm only leaving the frames turned on with the eyeball that I'm actually using. But I can try out different ones in their place. Yeah, I like that. And you see he's starting to swell. In fact, he's swelling a little. Oh, no, he's not swelling that intensely, but the zoom is starting. But that's okay. I like it. Is frame 13 maybe better? Yeah, maybe. Okay, now let's uh, try frame 15. Let's move that here. Frame 16, maybe. Those are too similar. So let's go to frame 14. Let's put that right here. So his mouth is open, right? Then he starts to change. I like that. Okay, now I'm gonna deal cards are on top of this deck that I don't see yet. So I don't need that one, don't need that one. Start to zoom out again. There we go. And that's when his head flies off. So actually, this is the one I want. I'm going to shift my middle one a little bit. This is the one I want right here. I'm going to take frame 17 and actually move it here. And in the middle, Let's see, maybe yeah, frame 16. So you get that kind of swelling and color change. That's what the middle is all about. <coughs> now my last one is all about the head popping off. So frame 20, frame 21, head goes off, the hands coming out, but maybe yeah, this one would be even better. Frame 22. And then I have to figure out what my final frame is. Probably, probably this one. I think that makes sense. So I don't need to have it reset here. I just need to have the hand kind of grabbing and pulling it back. So maybe frame 22, I can try instead frame 23, yeah, where it's actually catching. Let 
And that's how you kind of deal out your cards. And then I might think, okay, maybe frame 20, maybe I could get away with frame 21 instead. Where is frame 21? There it is. Eh, that's a, that's a, that's a tough one. I think I like that one because his eyes still open there. All right. So now if I hit command semicolon, I can turn off my guides and I'll see it. And you'll have perfect spacing in between each, with a little extra on each edge. And this is now your final storyboard. So how do you save it? You don't want to overwrite your stage animation. Remember, because we shrunk it, we did all kinds of things. So we're going to file save as your name, assignment five, and we're going to call this final storyboard. To the desktop. Not, uh, and we're going to save it as a PSD because you might decide to show other frames sometimes. This PSD has all those, those different options. But then to put it up to photo bucket, we're going to save it as a JPEG with the same name, final storyboard, to the desktop, and we're going to reduce its quality so that it's smaller than uh, five megabytes, especially because our animations are, are going to be much larger than that. Yep, so around eight. OK, now I have all the components to upload my project to PhotoBucket for the critique. I have my initial sketch. If you haven't put this in your computer, you can do a screen grab of it using FaceTime and Command-Shift-4. Right? I have my GIF animation, which I have tested through playing it on a web browser. It works great. The timing's good. Even though it's only 256 colors, it still runs pretty smooth. I like how the texture fills really give it atmosphere. Okay, and I now have my final storyboard as a JPEG. And you can kind of tell that stuff is happening. You know, you can tell the story like a comic book, though it's more fun to see it moving in this case. And you can see the sun setting. What doesn't come across so well here are the zooms, right? But when you squint, the creature definitely does take prominence in this area because I zoomed in. Okay, so how do we upload them? You go to the right folder. You're going to go to the Assignment 5 GIF Animation folder. And you upload your work. And then how are you going to label them? The only one I still have to upload is my final storyboard. And you label them uh, in this order. Your sketch, your final storyboard, and then your GIF animation. So one, two, three. With your name the same way. So I already have my, my sketch uploaded. That's going to be uh, my name with a one after it with our semester code. I already have my animation uploaded. That's going to be number three. Now I need the final storyboard in between those two. And let's see if it's come in. Ah, I interrupted it. It was showing me an error. And that's just gives photo buckets a little glitchy when we're all trying to use it. Why does it keep showing that? This is just a JPEG and it's fewer than five megabytes. But once I get that in, that will be number two. And then we'll do our critique. And that is it. It's really fun to get to see these. Make sure that you upload the GIF that has the timing that plays right. They play a little bit faster when they're rendered for online viewing than they do in Photoshop because they don't have all the resolution. Okay, so sometimes when you're getting a glitch for loading, if you reload, it will show up. But I'm going to keep trying. 
bringing in my 